We have one last demo to do, and while they're setting it up, I will at least just give you a few of my reflections on what we're seeing today. Uh, no, no, um, so no. one thing, you know, I do have the privilege of traveling a lot. You know, I've been in, whether it's Silicon Valley or Berlin or London um, or, or Shanghai. You know, one thing that does strike me that's positive is actually the level of discourse and discussion that you hear in Europe and places like Paris is quite impressive, right? So the, the, the people I do find, say, relative to five years ago, it really is true there's movement in the European ecosystem, at least at the intellectual level. But really this issue of moving from knowing, so I think Europeans leaders, business leaders know, but how do they do? There's a big gap. And again, I'd, I'd really though pick up on, on one thing that Andre said, which is the scale issue. Right, so I, I don't, th I mean there's a big structural issue between China, Europe, and, and the US, and it's not the passion of the people or the smarts, but the scale of the market for digital, for an entrepreneurial economy really matters. How are we doing, are we getting ready? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll keep talking, that's all right. So um, then the, the, thir uh, my, the other reflection I had though, and I'm bringing it back a bit to the European, I mean the, the INSEAD context is, I think, one of the things I think Catherine talked about in the discussion with Subi is, well, where's the added value of people when there's all this specialist happening? And I just point out that, you know, the basic education of being a generalist, general management, is hugely needed. And I, one of the, when I said at the beginning I find AI hugely fascinating, it's because usually what does it mean to be good at general management strategy? It's that you've got basic frameworks for understanding things and you apply them to different phenomena. And definitely AI is an amazing phenomenon. And what you, you, if you think about the things we've heard about, we hear about, okay, there's individual projects and how do you manage those? We think about, well, how are industries evolving? We talk about how, and then at the last level, what does this mean at a social level? And again, that's, of course, that's, that's tricky, but that ability to see how things are playing out at different levels, to make connections, um, is where typically you, 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 know, you draw two things. You drive the most value. If you can really see that system, you can spot opportunities. And then the second thing in, around this question of shaping what the hell's going on, I mean, the, the thing that we, we often are, are poor at as humanity, actually, is understanding our whole systems and guiding them to good outcomes. So we really need that. I hope this conference is helping you connect some of those dots. Now, to set up our last thing, this is a little bit different. This is for you, and that this is about disruption. Um, it's a little bit of a different topic, but um, we did a back of the envelope calculation. The INSEAD community, faculty, MBA students, all those MBAs going through consulting, we've probably made our a close to a billion slides in PowerPoint. So as a community, we're, we're deeply invested in, power, in PowerPoint. And so um, Accenture, we'd seen, had been doing some things about disrupting traditional presentations using augmented reality. So we just wanted to give you a brief taster of disruption, next generation in presentation. We're going to bring back Eve. Eve, over to you. Close us off. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so you, you set the expectation, huh, no? You set the expectation, so, well. So, I, indeed, I'm back, so I uh, feel like a bit recycled again, though. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be here. So, let's talk about uh, uh, a technology vision. So, we're going to just spend 10 minutes, so, you know, it's going to be just like touching the top, top, top of the surface. So, um, let's, uh, yeah. So, let's talk about it. So, every year we do tech vision, yeah. Every year we do tech vision, and uh, we try to, to, to define what's going to come, you know. Not, on, not the 10 years, but you know, we like to make revenue out of ideas, so it's the next like two to three years as well. So, um, and we talked a lot about, we saw a lot of cloud coming in, you know, all companies are moving to cloud, so that's like a given now today. Uh, we see new stuff coming in, like I know uh, in, um, uh, in the Middle East, uh, this is the place, I'm sure you know, where there is the first robot who has a citizenship. I'm sure you know that about, so th those type of things are coming. And, um, we, I want to have technology with me uh, presenting with this phone because we live with phones every, uh, every, every one of us. Some of you, I think you're still touching it, uh, which is fine. You know how much time you touch your phone every day? An idea? 2,600? 
if you have kids, you know how many the kids like 15, 16 years old touch it? About 4,000. So that's the, that's the type of number. So that's why I want to use that phone today. So uh, we have, there is five themes. The overall theme is around intelligent enterprise because we believe like putting AI uh, within, a, within a system, uh, within a company is the way to operate tomorrow. So there is no other option. It's touching every industry. So the first theme that I wish to, uh, to talk about is, is around citizen AI. It's around the responsible AI. How do we use AI? Uh, how, how do we use AI in a, in a, in a company uh, to, uh, or, or for the government to, um, uh, to get value out of it? So for example, in the uh, uh, New York um, Icahn School of Medicine, I don't know if you know, but they've been scanning 800,000 files. For what benefit the doctor can get 78 diseases pre-diagnosed. So that helps them to accelerate the way they're going to do the diagnosis uh, to do their job. More in company, like in board, we saw in Accenture, but in, in some company, there is a formal board member. So they play a bit at the beginning, but now they use it. It's in the Nordic, where the board member is an AI agent. Right? So citizen AI is the first theme. If we, if, but on a, I just touched it a bit. So the next one, which is a bit related to uh, using phone to do presentation is around extended reality. The way, the way we look at it is that this is the end of distance. We heard before there's going to be a world with no screen, no keyboard, nothing. The world is coming extremely quick, extremely quick. So an extended reality can be applied in business. If you are working at Airbus, I don't know if anyone was working at Airbus today, this is the way now they, they are putting the seats on the plane on the latest plan. So the, the workers doing the job, they don't have any books, nothing. They do the job and they go with, with glasses, which helps them to, to, to know, you know where to fit the seats, which is, sounds to be simple, but it's a very complex process. Do you have any idea about the productivity that this is bringing? Shoot a number, anyone, like Joanna. Give a try. She doesn't know, Andre. 30%, yeah, okay, thank you, Peter. 500% productivity in the process to plug the seats. Um, and the, the error rate, which I would not say what it was before, became zero. So there is no more error rate in the, in the way they put the seats on. So this is what we call the end of distance. The next one, we talked before about the, the, the data. And it's true that us, like company, but many companies worked a lot on collecting data because we always thought that the data is the key to do AI, which, which is true. But data veracity is becoming the most important trend to be sure the data you're going to use are right. If you take an example, if you are an oil company and all the decision made to drill somewhere is based on data today. So if there is a breach in the data, you're going to spend hundreds of millions to drill at the wrong place. Right? If uh, you, you are shooting something to the moon, to whatever, like Elon Musk is, is, is doing at scale today, in the Dragon capsule, it, it put in place six computers, and they are all working in pairs. And their job is just to check the veracity of data before the process is using the data. And if there is a problem between the computer, the process is stopped, because the risk is to crash uh, the mission. Uh, the fourth theme, which I think, Andre, you touched a bit, is around the ecosystem, which we call frictionless business. There is no way. We talk about AI, we need to have AI in any company. There is no way to run a company if you are not partnering with your ecosystem. Meaning, when you sell a product, the product is connected with your partner online. It's not about making a contract and a partnership. It's to work together online for, for your client. So, for example, if you are a pharmacy Walgreens in the US, what do they do? They set up 275 partnership, 275 partnership for their loyalty system. So if you buy something at their place, then it gets automatically to your Walgreens uh, credit, and automatically you get the benefit while you buy the thing. Right? And they did that instead of years, they implemented the 275 partnership in six months. Because they use agile methodology and all that thing, but they did it in six months. That's the way to operate. And they are generating more revenue based on that. So frictionless business, like Andre, you mentioned around the ecosystem, is. That's the only way as a company to operate. The only way. So you can't operate anymore with, without creating products that are part of your ecosystem. Uh, and frictionless business can be as well used, for example, with uh, uh, 
creating digital identity. I don't know whether you know, but there is a billion people with no identity in this world. So like refugee, if you are a refugee today, we are currently deploying with ID2020 a system that creates digital identity so the people can be recognized when they go to a place to get the benefit or whatever they are looking for because we have to present identity all the time and a billion people just don't have it. So it's, it's done in a frictionless way, totally digital. It, and connecting agencies, everyone together on the platform. The last, uh, the last theme, and again, it's very touching the surface, is around IoT, but not the internet of thing. This is over, collecting data from a, a device, making your process, and then next time be better, is done. It's more the internet of thinking. Meaning now we're gonna develop more and more system with the computing at the edge in the device, which is collecting the data, processing the data, and then making a decision on the device and moving on. Like if you are Virgin E Formula, uh, e -formula race, uh, the, the car, it's, it's, it's doing this. And there has been some solution developed in the car which is collecting the data and while the car is moving on the track, it automatically adjusts itself based on what it's collecting as data and computing within the car. And we're gonna see more and more computing done there. So we have to rethink the way we do compute because it's not anymore the old way. It's on the edge because it's, it's becoming possible. So uh, that's how we call the internet of thinking. So in an ultra summary, because this is what uh, more the appetizer before the lunch, is uh, about unleashing the, the intelligent enterprise, leveraging some of those technologies that are not for the next five to 10 years, but have to be applied now. As a company, what would I do in order to implement that? I talked before around digital factory and stuff like that. I think as a company like we did, you need to define what the new is for you. So you take some of those tech and say, okay, for me, that's part of the new. And then you start measuring your revenue down in the new. You don't know exactly what you will do, but at least you define what it is. Then you can pivot to the new as a company, like in Accenture, we are at 60% of our revenue today. The second thing you need to do is to do innovation at scale, but not everyone doing it. As I say, more in a factory model, at a physical place where all the innovation is done for that company in a very industrialized way. And the last thing that has been touched with some of us here is around the talent. If you do all this without a talent strategy, then you, so, you see like we see in France, people firing people, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to have a talent strategy to rotate the people to those coming technology because either they're gonna be in or they're gonna be out and as leaders, you are responsible of the people you are employing. So, and the summary, there is one word we try to summarize all that. You can operate in this new world connecting the ecosystem only if you do one thing, you trust the people you work for. Because you can't define the end game when you start engaging as a contract because you are innovating. So you must trust, trust, trust the people you have to partner with within your ecosystem, leveraging the coming tech. And we'll see what we're gonna come next year as new tech. So Peter, that was the appetizer. Awesome. For lunch. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Eve.